This video is covering an introduction to the paper for Information Technology Unit 2, Create Systems to Manage Information. This is Part B, and Part B was sat on the 17th of January 2023. It's a two-hour paper, and you'll be provided with not only the templates to complete, but also a Part B database that you're going to use. It's completely separate from Part A. If you've done Part A and you felt like maybe you've made some mistakes, perhaps you haven't done it as well as you thought or hoped you might, you can come into Part B of the exam completely fresh and you start again with another database that you're provided with. It's already set up. There's data in the database. All the relationships are set up and you're using that to base your forms on. A set of instructions here to in Part B, and it's just saying that there's 40 marks for Part A, which we know are 26 for Part B, 66 in total. You'll be provided with materials for this specific series of the exam, so in terms of things like templates and the actual databases. You will only have access to Part B during this session, which is a two-hour supervised session. Again, it's done under exam conditions. I'll go through that in a minute again. You won't have access to any Part A materials during the completion of Part B, although Part A and Part B are submitted together for each learner, and you need to answer all the activities. The first page is a list of instructions to the invigilators. The second page has a list of the outcomes for submission. And again, each learner needs to create a folder to submit the work in, and the folder should be named accordingly, and it gives you how the folder should be named. You will be told where to store the folder in the exam. And it's the same as Part A, in as much as it's centre number, underscore, registration number, underscore, surname, underscore, first letter of first name, underscore part B and it gives us an example here for Joshua Smith with a registration number of F180542 that's centre 12345 and the folder will be titled 12345 underscore F180542 underscore Smith underscore J underscore part B and then in the folder you're going to submit three PDF documents and the final database. And again, it tells us how the PDF documents should be named. So, for example, we've got activity six underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name. And again, don't worry if you can't remember these file names. It does tell you in each activity how they should be named. On the next page, is a list of instructions for the learners. Again, you're advised to read the scenario, the brief and the activity information carefully. Plan your time carefully to allow for preparation and completion of activities. Again, each activity does have an indication as to how much time you should spend on them. Internet access is not allowed and you're completing these activities under supervision and your work will be collected securely at all times. You must work independently throughout the exam and must not share your work with others. So, again, we're under exam conditions. Your invigilator may clarify the wording that appears in Part B, but they won't be able to provide you with any guidance on the completion of the activities. You've also not got any access to Part A. Part A is finished and gone. You've only got access to the completion of Part B. And then we've got the outcomes for submission. Again, just a little reminder, you're going to create a folder to submit your working. It tells you how to name the folder. Your invigilator will tell you where to share the folder. You'll be given your centre number, your registration number, and it gives us an example there of the name of the folder. For Part B, you are submitting three PDF documents and your final database within the folder and it tells you the three PDF documents, how they should be named. Again, as I say, don't get in a panic if you can't remember these names. It does tell you in each activity how to name the files. On the next page is the Part B brief, and you're advised to spend 10 minutes reading through the scenario and the activities. 
I highly recommend that you do this. You can make notes or highlight information. So again, make sure you've got a pen and highlighter with you when you go into the exam. We've got the scenario and in here there will be a range of information that you will need to be able to complete the activities. So again, it's important to read it through and just highlight things that are important. On the next page, we've got activity six and it recommends you spend an hour and 10 minutes on this. Please note, don't change the structure of the tables provided in the database in any way. Do not add validation to the tables. Do not change any data types. And it tells you you will only be required to use, in this case, three tables from the database. Now, activity six is split up into two parts. The first part is an input form to add a record to a table. And this is usually pretty straightforward. It involves creating a form, creating a macro or coding some validation. Everybody should be able to do part A quite easily. And then part B is a little bit more complicated. It's often a form that involves uh, using fields from different tables, maybe some calculations, use of functions, for example. Quick thing about formatting here, make sure you use the same formatting features that you use in your report. The examiner is looking for a standardised approach, a house style to the report and the forms. Again, you don't have to do any particularly complex formatting. You just need to demonstrate that you have used some formatting features and that your forms look professional. Activity 6 has a template to complete. And in this, you're going to show uh, the design view of your forms and your forms in form view, any queries that you've used and any data sheet views and any coding as in macros or code that you have created and used in your forms. Again, just make sure when you are filling in this activity template that no images are truncated or uh, detail in your images are truncated. The examiners are going to be working off these PDFs toward marks. So you need to make sure that everything is visible to the examiner. And so save it as a PDF um, in your folder and it gives you the time that you are advised to complete this activity within. Form two might take you over one hour, 10 minutes as it could be quite complex. The thing about Form 2 is to have a go at it, even if you don't get it just right, you will get some marks, for example, getting the right fields on, formatting, and, and having a go at it. So don't feel defeated, just have a go at it, and hopefully you get it right. Activity is testing of your interface or your forms, and it uses a similar template to the one in activity, uh, sorry, part A. You're actually told again exactly what to test. Make sure you just cover these and don't include any other tests that aren't asked for. They won't attract any marks. You're completing the test log. Uh, it's called Activity 7 Template, and again, save it with file name. 20 minutes on this activity. Again, if you are well practiced, you will get through that easily in 20 minutes. And then finally, Activity 8. There's no template for this. You will create this in Word and save it as a PDF. It's an evaluation. Slightly different to the evaluation in Part A, uh, you're evaluating from the user's point of view here. And it's important to link up the features that you've used, which have an impact on the user experience. And again, it will give you a list of the things that you have to evaluate. Don't evaluate in anything that's not on the list. It won't attract any marks. Save it as a PDF. And again, you know you're going to have to carry out this evaluation. So it's a good idea to practice creating one or two evaluations prior to the exam and get an idea of the things that you should be writing about, the words you should be including. And finally, my advice is you need to practice creating these folders and practice creating these templates prior to the exam. The more you practice, the more you're committing to 
long-term memory and you'll be able to go into the exam feeling confident that there's things that you know what to do, how to do prior to the exam and they're just second nature to you and they're not going to take you or give you any grief in the exam. In the next video I'm going to look at creating the first form of part B.